Greetings, Ranger Geeks and Morphing Freaks. Welcome to the Morphomania Podcast. It's time to recap and review another three episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1. With us, the Angel Grove chapter of the Aces and Eights. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, all right. I call being Ken Anderson. I call Wes, Wes Briscoe. I guess that I'm D'Lo Brown then. No, no, you get to be Nux. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to be D'Lo. You get to be Nux okay. or Doc. You can also be oh. Doc. I'll allow Doc. They both suck, so. <laughs> Screw you. I'm Bully. Nope. Okay. You're okay. either Nux or Doc. I'm not bald okay. enough yeah. for Bully. Hold on. No, my, my hair's too pretty. I, I think I have to You're be. not bald enough right now. Either the Briscoe or the Bischoff. In five more years, you'll be bald. <laughs> you are the Bischoff of the Aces and Aids. Anyway. That one, there was a violation. He gave her the super clap. <laughs> it's humanoid. I think I gave her the super clap. I don't know. This is how we do it. Hello. It's <laughs> summoning the generation, guys. He believes in Joe Hendry. <laughs> it's the Damn joint. right. Say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. I also believe in Joe Hendry, but I think I think the doy believes in Joe Hendry the most. I swear to God, if, if Joe Hendry watches this episode, you serious? I no. will get a tattoo of his face on him on me somewhere. <laughs> your butt. <laughs> it's official. You'll get a Joe Hendry tattoo on your butt. A Joe Hendry tramp stamp. Yes, his left face on his left butt cheek and his right face on your right butt cheek. All Wait, right, oh, it's direct. like he's facing left direction on my left butt cheek and he's yeah. facing right on my. Anyway, let's move on to the episodes. No, I gotta finish the intro. And it's me, Mighty Morphing Deep Roy. <laughs> Deep Roy, goddamn, uh, that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. Yeah, that's the that's the Oompa Loompa that's from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is Deep Roy. It's all the Oompa Loompas. I would be one scary ranger. I had a nightmare binge where I was listening to all of the songs from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I was just clicking way too hard with them. <laughs> They're good songs. The movie on itself it's, is it's, not it's, that it's good. Special. The Violet Beauregard song is the one that hits me the hardest. Chewing, 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 chewing all day all long. Day long. <laughs> Let's talk about the episodes we're reviewing today. We're past episode 40. Past two-thirds, baby. Almost, because I think 66, so once we had 44. By, by the end of this episode, we will almost be at three quarters of the way through the season. I, I gotta say, like, I've seen people talk about this show, this season in particular, and it not aging well, because most of it being filler. I gotta say, you know what? It being mostly filler has made it fun. I agree. The fun season of TV to watch. <laughs> Now, up, that being said, up I until, can't stand this episode. Really? I was going to say, up until Cleanup Club, all the fillers were awesome. No, actually, wait. No, you're right. Cleanup Club was really bad. It was the first bad one. It, it was an episode about cleaning up, but in reality, it's hot garbage. We're starting off this time with season one, episode 42, A Pink Surprise. Gee, it aired. I wonder who's going to show up. <laughs> what can this book Stupid. You know you love him. Is this the first time a monster has returned that wasn't like Frankenstein or one of the five that were in? Uh, 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 hold, hold on one second, Adam. That a answer to your question, Andreas. <laughs> How about no? I was wondering what the ver was, but that's the sound of his chair. <laughs> yeah, that was the sound. Of <laughs> that's what that was. That was the sound of his chair, though. Okay, it was. It aired February eighth, ninety four, and was written by Shuki Levy, Douglas Sloan, and directed by Robert Hughes. No, sorry, as you were saying, Adam. Besides, like Island of Illusion, where a bunch of them came back as illusions. Yeah. And uh, the Frankenstein monster, this is the first time an actual monster came back. We actually have something episode. to talk about this episode, something that they bring up earlier on that you'll see and we'll want to get to it and how it's kind of unique for this early in the show. So we open up and here's something else here. The uh, animal fair or the... Pet adoption. Pet adoption. The pet giant adoption. pet adoption thing. Yeah. If you listen to the opening narration, I'm pretty sure that's the voice of the Zordon actor because there's a few inflections that he gives that sound very similar to Zordon. Angel Grove's annual pet adoption day. 
The opening just narration. Not in a fishbowl, I guess. I didn't even hear narration. What narration we are you talking it. about? Or, or not narration, sorry. Overhead speaker, like an announcer. Oh, like the intercom. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, All no, right. I, I did not hear that. I only noticed it upon my second viewing and how if you just listen to it, it, it really does sound like him. And I can't think of too many times where David Fielding voiced other characters in the show. I remember when he came in the first day on set, <laughs> poor guy, I watched him shave his head, paint his torso green, stick him in a tube, do some basic filming, and then if you go back and you watch the Zordon episodes, you never actually really see his lips. They were so cheap that they just fuzzed out his mouth so they didn't ever have to reshoot him again and they could just bring him in and have him do ADR. Maybe the first week, occasionally, when I would come in to do ADR, I would pass him in a hallway, hey Dave, hey Dave, hey Austin, hey Austin, how's it going? Good, another day, yeah, another day, great. What are you here for? Uh, I gotta give you your orders to go kill somebody. Like, oh, okay. This allows me to bring up a running gag that I was going to use later in the episode, but I'll still use it then, but I'm gonna use it now. This is just another case of a uh, Haim Saban being cheap, 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 mm. cheap, cheap, cheap. And they don't get royalties from this show either because they're non-union. They don't. They're not in SAG. Saban hates that shit. Like he doesn't like SAG yeah. actors. So that's how he got away with most of his like non-union work. We officially, have a new segment on the show called Zordon's Secret Files, or I guess it's an old segment when we go over the character stuff. But now, branding. Branding. It has the name. Tommy. David J. Fielding. Oh my god, it's scary to see him as a human. <laughs> yes. Here's where what we have. Oh, he was the narrator for a TV miniseries called Bloodline of the Grid. Yeah, Ooh, that was awesome. That's a good YouTube sh series. I, I just watched that, and oh my god, it's great to hear David Fielding again. Okay, he was in a video game called Empire Earth. Video games that don't really have a lot of buys, I guess. Oh, he uh, uh, was also in the short that never came out, with all the former Power Ranger actors uh, directed by Akira Baris, like called The Order. And I'm still waiting mm -hmm. for that goddamn movie to come out because everybody was looking forward to it. Because almost every actor from every Power Rangers season was in it, playing mercenaries. <laughs> Ah! Just to be clear, it's an ambush! What are we gonna do? We're gonna fight back. I holy see. crap! Yeah, I'm looking at the poster and it's like, holy shit! Yeah, remember that trailer? I'm gonna show you the trailer later, but the trailer looked amazing. <laughs> Why yeah, has hasn't good. this film come out yet? Oh, there's a bunch of bullshit. I don't know, cause like something about money and not having permits. So the idea was was developed by Karen Ashley. She uh, she's producing. She's the one that's in charge of that uh, that behemoth, and uh, she she did a great job. In fact, her design, her writing, uh, she did an incredible job. But we all teamed up to to really get it out there to the fans. And uh, she coordinated most of that, so I really have to give her credit for 99.9% .9 of it. And she reached out to all of us, and everybody loves her. She's like our little ray of sunshine. She's just sweet and bright, and everybody loves her. And she wanted to put something together that, had, that brought all of the Rangers from multiple generations together for the fans. And uh, she did. She created the order. She wrote a script. We all flew to L.A. And, well, I flew. Most, a lot of them were already out there. And we were on set, ready to film, and we had permission from SAG, which is the union, if you're an actor. And they all gave us permission, we were ready, we had stunts there, we were, I was choreographing my first fight for the movie. And uh, the union came in the day before we filmed and shut it down. So now she's, uh, she's repackaging it, and I think she's working on trying to turn it into a TV series. And uh, the last I heard from her, maybe a, a couple of weeks ago, She's having some great talks and good conversations, and uh, she holds out high hopes to, to get it to a series, and, and then we'll start again. Karen Ashley, like, who played Aisha, she's the one who got the order put together, and apparently, like, she didn't get everything done. Like, like fans are saying that she scammed them and all that, but who knows what the real story is? I have no idea. He was, he was, it was more than just in the order. He also wrote and co-produced the order. Right, right, that too. Uh, he's also in archived footage for the, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Sega CD game, <laughs> <laughs> which is just the, the the episodes, but with quick time events over them. He was also in archived footage of Zordon for the 2023, I assume this is a fan production, 
Tommy a Power Rangers story. Oh, that's just a YouTube video of all Tommy scenes from the Power Rangers seasons, and they just called it a Tommy movie. It's kind of oh. it's kind of stupid, but it's every well, episode stupid. that he was in. Okay, that that sucks. This was this has been the most let down uh, version of Zordon Secret Files. I'm so sorry, David Fielding. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Your contribution to the series will never be forgotten. It's just a shame that everything you did outside of Power Rangers wasn't didn't really amount to anything. Oh my God! Wait, no, hold on, guys. We 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 missed it because David Fielding teamed up with Tommy in the greatest VHS special of all time, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Karate Club Level One, where they fight the Crimson Sausage. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Uh, Here comes the crimson uh, sausage. Uh, <laughs> I got to use that twice in this podcast. Fuck yeah. Yeah, here's to 20 more. Ay, 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 ay. Look, sort of. Now let us begin the stretching exercises, Alpha. Now it is time to review the steps of the Green Ranger Kata. Oh, front stand kick. Shoot a job. <laughs> okay, so where were we? Well, honestly, we we had to give David Fielding his flowers because we he does he... deserve them. His contribution to the series will not will not be understated. We're gone and I'm going to close it with this. I firmly believe Zordon is the Commissioner Gordon of Power Rangers. He, Zordon is the Commissioner Gordon. That makes the most sense. And that makes his Skull the Joker. <laughs> well, no, there already is a Joker. Well, oh, right, no, he is the Joker. I forgot because remember, Batman's canon to Power Pig shows up with Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> this Honey Boo Boo's mom, th this old lady, takes her pig to go to the main four because Zach is not with them this time because he's running late. They help out old Norman a new home. Look for eight to ten minutes or until the bacon reaches your own personal desired doneness. A few notes I have here. One, Kimberly hates pigs with a passion. Oh, he's so cute. So we cut to Zack in the woods, uh, running towards... Running for your life from Shia LaBeouf. He's brandishing a knife, it's Shia LaBeouf. Go to the pet adoption, and he sees something that puzzles him, as does the rest of us. Living in the woods, Shia LaBeouf. Killing for sport, Shia LaBeouf. The granny yeah. decides to... Honestly, take it away, Snoop Dogg. Gang bang affiliate, hit a stick real quick, and then see walk home. Oh, the course crip walking, cuz you see that? <laughs> I was gonna say that the, the old lady, a member of the Ministry of Silly Walks. I see, uh, man, I see old city walk. <laughs> yes. I was thinking this is actually no, you know thing. What? And then morphs into a putty. Yeah, because she I, was I, a putty the whole time. He's a stunt granny. <laughs> yes, and immediately all the putties show up to fight Zack. Which is a good fight, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. it's a good solo fight for Zack since we can't the Tommy quota fight. The inaugural Tommy putty fight that needs to be in every single episode. And he caps it off with a spin -a rooney Also, we cut to Bendera Castle, and Scorpion is there. It, bitch. Every time Scorpion is just there, like yeah, he's just, she's just she's just Goldar's side piece now. She never does anything. Maybe later. Anyway, <laughs> I have here big character development for Balkan Skull. This this is the turning point for the two because yep. they come in late for the option, and all animals are gone except for Norman. Ah, uh, Norman. Norman the lunatic. And Norman. Sorry? God damn it. Norman, Norman the, the lunatic. lunatic. God damn it. <laughs> Norman is given to Bulk and Skull, and at first they're like, huh? But then they really get into it. They straight up take care of this pig, like, properly. Like an actual pet. And yeah. I am really surprised that maybe due to, like, the owner of the pig or whatever, or rights issues or uh, ownership problems with the pig, but I could easily see this pig becoming, like, a recurring character for the boys. Too bad he got slaughtered and got made into bacon. No, shut. <laughs> anyway, no, because I'm slapping my knee, looking at your face. So Skull has a book on how to take care of a pig, which is pretty funny. You think they sell that? Like actually.
<laughs> why why would it be specifically for a pig though? I don't know. He found a book that says how to take care of a pig. Do, do you think it talks about like hygiene? Probably. <laughs> Most likely. Let's, let's turn to the hygiene chapter and just sc- scrolls to the end. It's one page in like 40 font. It rolls in shit. Who gives a fuck? It's a fucking pig. Oh, Christ. And we cut to the, the high school where we see the pig wearing the ascot and uh, Bulk and Skull being clearly very proud of the animal. Like, pig! Norman! Proud. Normally, they get embarrassed Mm -hmm. uh, when they screw up or make mistakes in this kind of thing. And after they try and get the pig to do a trick, it does fall in their face. But they don't care. They're just happy that they have a new friend. They're fulfilled. And I'm so proud of Bulk and Skull. Proud. I am going to say that the happiness they feel from feel from this moment skull realizes who needs to kill anymore <laughs> uh but unfortunately the status quo must be maintained oh we'll we'll fucking get to that oh fuck uh i, f- I forgot to mention before zach after defeating the uh the putties he sees this device on the ground which kind of reminded me of almost like a pke meter kind of it reminded me of the fucking garage door opener from return of the jedi where you threw it at the, at, to get the rancor in the fucking oh game. yeah that too we cut to the i was gonna say the death star what we I'm cut sure. to bandora <laughs> castle <laughs> We no, you gotta write the first down. We cut to the we cut to the Death Star. <laughs> Re- Goldar is like going like, "Oh, we must do this, Darth Rita. Rita. It's time, Rita. Do it. Do it now." I said Darth Rita, not Arnold Rita. Yeah, she's Darth Rita. Goldar is Arnold. Yeah. When was, Ar- when was Arnold in Star Wars? <laughs> Yeah, wait a minute. When no. the fuck was Arnold in Star Wars? Never. I'm just saying, do it. Father. Do it now. I am your father, Luke. You need to join the dark side. <laughs> do it now. Honestly, Show honestly, me your little honestly. capabilities. Look, I, 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 I. Honestly, I see Arnold as Yoda. That is why you fail. For fuck's sake! God fucking damn, we're so off track. <laughs> so uh, we cut to Billy's garage where it's Zach and Trini and Billy in the garage examining the device. And they I... discover it's a kind of sort of cloaking device. They're on the set of Bill Nye, by the way. I hate to interrupt you, but uh, earlier when we were at Bandora Castle, Goldar said that soon they'll get a big surprise. Roll. And that's where I just put roll, roll credits. So. This is the interesting thing, though, I wanted to talk about with this episode was yes. the fact that they said it's a cloaking device. I, or at least I thought it was at first, but they established something. So after the device's timer uh, runs out and the stupid fucking pig turns into or Norman, sorry, turns into the stupid fucking pig. And then we get a brief kind of sort of fight scene I, I with a question mark where basically a uh, pudgy pig eats everything in sight again, eats the sandwich that Bulk really does not want to give up. Bulk, give him the food. He's just hungry. Forget it. I haven't eaten since lunch. I feel you there, man. I, I wouldn't want to give up a sandwich of that size as well. That would probably last would me. Would like Lady, Lady in the Tramping, the fucking sandwich, by the way? Well, of course. How if they were the doing it, sandwich. we'd be doing it. Guy love, he's mine, I'm his. Yo, I'll be over here, just out of that direction. Well, yes, because you're not my best friend. He is. Aww. I'm not, uh, <laughs> podcast over. <laughs> no. <laughs> So he takes a sandwich and like he tries to like podcast over end of series. Yes. <laughs> Why did the podcast end? Friendship, fatality. <laughs> okay. Fuck. But um, they mention something after the pig gets teleported away. After Zach is just about to start fighting it, we cut to the command center where they mentioned it's not entirely pudgy pig. Zordon, we can't hurt it. It's a real pig. It's just, it's not original pudgy pig. The device turns this pig into pudgy pig because they, they establish that that we, we can't hurt him because there is still a real animal under there. I actually noticed this is the first time in Power Rangers history that a normal civilian or civilian creature 
gets turned into a monster. And just wait until season two where Lord Zed makes everyday objects into monsters. Oh, no. <laughs> that happens enough in Sentai where that doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. I thought that only happened in RPM. Nope, you forgot Lord Zed doing all the monster you get is just from regular day appliances and things here and there. I'd like to mention at the 10 minute and 26 mark, Kimberly's facial expression of just her opening her mouth looking like <laughs> then we cut to the Japanese footage. Morph and they morph into reused Ju One footage of the Porky yeah. Pudgy Pig episode. Pretty fucking <laughs> obvious. Yeah. And they reverse the footage. <laughs> they do reverse the footage. This is the, honestly, this is my favorite reverse the footage he does because I just think of. What was the strategic purpose of jumping back up there? This is like Tommy fighting to keep his goddamn clothes on again. <laughs> it's just one of those weird editing quirks that I love. I have to find out who the editor for the show is and give him a big hug. Yeah, he had a lot to work through. I literally have in my notes, what's the point? <laughs> also, I, you, you're free to cut this out if no one has this in the notes, but I, I have in my notes, Kim farted. What the fuck? She farted? <laughs> I don't remember her farting. You, you know what? Cut it out. Okay. No, actually right. don't. Be, actually, no, don't cut it out because for some reason in my notes i have jason shat his pants <laughs> what, what <the laughs> fuck? two different people okay i know that's the strange thing i actually do know what this is for i just thought that was perfect timing so after uh, the fight scene which another really good uh z1 fight scene if it is z1 footage it is um, it's the exact same footage from the pudgy pig episode from the center oh no I, I meant i meant the fight scene with the putties we cut to the farm power yeah. ranger animal farm set yeah I, I love it every time we see the the suits and american footage because it looks so silly yeah. and mighty morphing funny farm and this is where i put jason shat his pants because the way he's hunched over here and the way he just like sticks his thumb out and you see him walk away <laughs> that is someone who shat their pants and i'm not talking <laughs> like a little fucking like like no, I'm talking like they're log dogging it right now. Log walking. They're oh, log walking. They're going to the nearest bathroom and they're going to throw away their underwear. So anyway, <laughs> so we see uh, Jason find a pig in the pig pen. He goes like, oh, relatable. oh, what a nice looking pig. No, I'm, I'm just thinking about the fucking throwing out the underpants. We're like, you're at the park or something. It's like a really yeah. hot day. And you're <laughs> jumping around super excited. A five-year-old finds the garbage can. Oh, <laughs> giant shitty underwear in there. I'm. <laughs> oh God! Cut the... Okay, you know what? Cut the whole episode out. <laughs> no, I'm just imagining this all happening at the park that's right near my house because this is shit that could actually happen right near the park near my house. What the hell is wrong with you people? Well, they they just get behind giant haystacks. Check that out. And they go like, hey, there's the pudgy pig right there. And apparently the pudgy pig is trying to boink this other pig. Come with me to the pigsty. We make this beautiful bacon together. Now, you kept saying bacon earlier, but I actually had in my notes here something that he says here. He says, oh, my lovely, we can make beautiful bacon together. Oh, my God. Oh, God. God. Speaking oh, of, God. Speaking of this, like, when he ate the sandwich, was that ham? Was he eating those his own kind? Honestly, it, it's, it's sus. It's suspicious. <laughs> now, I did go back and take a look at the meat. There is the the coloration of the meat in the sandwich. It does look like there's some ham in there. It, but I'm pretty damn sure that that's not turkey. <laughs> Yummy! Campbell! Wait, now, hold on. If the pigs break out singing, does this count as Cannibal the Musical 2? Uh, uh, go to the corner. Anyway, Goldar is... Uh, that movie's great! I'm not going to the corner, you I like, I like I, I like Cannibal the Musical. Mm, I agree. Better than basketball. What? You have, okay, all right, moving on. So no, Gold actually, no, sorry. No, basketball must be trash right beside Waterboy and Little Nicky, right, Andreas? Basketball yeah. is actually funny. But anyway, Goldar is trashing the city in a ah! giant size. <laughs> the fact that you like basketball but hate Little Nicky is so infuriating. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> so Goldar is destroying the city as his giant self. Yes. Yeah, another Goldar big clip, which... <laughs> this has my yes. favorite ending to an episode ever! It's the funniest fucking editing. They do the big build-up after, like, the Goldar fight, but then it's just, like, you, you cut to fucking Goldar teleporting away, and then you have the, the fucking Megazord slashing at nothing, and it's freaking hilarious. You haven't seen the last of me, because then it cuts to just the Zordon standing there like he's a freaking dumbass. Just like, where did he go? Where did he go? Fuck that guy. Which way did he go, George? Which way did, did he, he go? go? Goldar uh, leaves. That's that's the end. Goldar freaking leaves and says, I'll get him next time, Gadget Arita. Next <laughs> time. Da, 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 da. Fuck. And then uh, we cut back to... Power um, Ranger Animal Farm. And we see Norman turn back to normal. And they then they can fuck without it being weird. How would that work if it wasn't? I'm I not going to think about it. I don't want to know. They're, they're like kissing noses, so... Back in high school, Trino goes like, oh, Norman got adopted by the farmer. He'll have a good home in the slaughterhouse for bacon. Would you like to sample our vegan bacon? Yes, please. Poor Bulk and Skull. They were already treating Norman so well. I, I, I do like to think that they still kill, or at least Skull still does, like a few episodes on. But I, I think, uh, or the feeling of finally, like, having some positivity in their life, even though it was taken away. But I think this is the beginning of Bulk and Skull finally developing moral. Bulk and Skull are not about killing any secondary character. They're just there to kill the worst one. We talking about... We'll get there. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. Mr. Cavlin brings in another pig and Bulk and Skull freak out. Did he say pig? He did, he said pig. <laughs> Yes. Like, not uh, only did they lose their pet, now they have a fear of pigs. <laughs> Indeed. I'm, I'm going to keep checking conventions to see if Polly and Jason ever come near Edmonton or Vancouver. And all three of us need to go and just be like, do you guys need a hug? <laughs> They'll be looking at us like, <laughs> what the hug? hell are you talking about? Polly reacts like that. Jason starts crying. That was certainly an episode. I need to lie down after that one. So next episode, episode 43, something fishy. Something is fishy. Unfortunately, you will not be able to lay down unless you want to sleep with the fishes. <laughs> and who is this directed by? It was directed by Robert Hughes, I can tell you that much. And it was written by Cheryl Saban, and I can tell you that much. So How dare you? That's my thing. Okay. That's his okay, thing. Okay, you, you, you can cut me out. You can do the thing, Malcolm. No, it's all good, actually. Is that it? Is that all who... Uh... I don't know the air date. Uh, the, the air date was uh, February 9th, uh, 1994. Robert Hughes is on a hot streak. I haven't seen Terrence H. Winkless in forever. So we open at Angel Grove High. The classes are just getting out. We open the door, and who's the first one up? It's Joe fucking dirt. Hey man, you done with that apple core? I just either <laughs> one one pretty uh, dude or one ugly looking chick. Sorry. Talking to my guy all wrong here. Do it again. I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. <laughs> the five goody goods all get out of class at the same time. And Trini and Zach are very excited about scuba diving with Jason later. Uh, they ask Billy if he wants to go. And Billy's like, you know what? No, I, I really don't want to go. And then Kimber's like, yeah, we, we're not going to go. And besides, I'm going on a picnic with Billy later. Billy and I are going to go to the park for a picnic. Which is our third Billy's a man whore moment. They're like, oh, I can't wait to see all the fish. And then Bulk and Skull come in. And Kimberly was like, hey. You don't have to go that far. Some of the biggest fish are right here. Bulk and Skull are dressed like fishermen. They're really on that FF14 fisherman class mindset right now. Here to say, oh, you might, you losers aren't going to see any fish tonight. Because we're going to go and catch all of the biggest fish today. And then Bulk goes to his locker to get the bait. He opens the fucking locker and everything falls on top of him, just like the Crab Brothers when they open the closet in Zaboomafu. Going to the closet, they're going on a trip. Also, a bucket falls out, and I'm thinking, Mr. Bucket, put your balls in my mouth. God, that <laughs> happens every time you think of a bucket. I know, <laughs> and I... no, that's that's worse. You know why? Because you two fucks now, I'm imagining Mr. Bucket going after the Krat Brothers. So they find the can of worms, and off they go. Skull's outfit, specifically. He's got a lot of chains and a lot of belts, as per usual. 
but he's got a fish coming out of his hat. Yeah. That yeah, fun. that was that's hilarious. This is really weird. This is the most so they, 90s fishing of uh, fucking expedition I've seen ever. Right down to the fact when I read the can of worms, I thought it was I thought it was corn, but spelled yeah. the 90s way. They go to leave and Skull picks up a net and actually has a bulk in the net bulk falls over and he's like what are you doing and skull says hey, look, folks. I caught one already. i'm like oh they're best friends that's some shit you would do to me maybe i'd be in the net i don't know i, I like to switch it up every now and then why do you always have to be in the net it's guy love between two guys fair point billy mentions that he has a fish fear what the hell oh yeah <laughs> it's never shown up until now, but he he's afraid of fish. We cut to Bandora Castle, and Bandora and uh, Rita's just like, ah, so Billy's afraid of fish, eh? <laughs> and then Goldar says, This is the perfect time to bring out your toxic goo fish or evil. <laughs> toxic goo fish. What the fuck? <laughs> the uh, that that is the evil arch nemesis of the Toxic Avenger. You know, it's funny fish. that uh, Billy has a fish fear when in Zio he goes off. To and falls in love with a fish alien and- Hello, Billy. What the fuck is that? Perhaps we should send Billy back to Aquatar for long-term treatment with stronger doses. I would never forgive myself if anything were to happen to you. Probably finds oh, a the fucking- Aquatar! Ah! Finds a fucking the fish girl. <laughs> I didn't even realize Damn, that really good. hilarious. He really goes full circle on that. Yeah, like, you remember what's her face? I've got to take the chance, Sestria. He goes with her and it's like, hey, yeah. <laughs> all I know about that all I know that about that is the really sad archived footage where they just like show him for like five seconds. Yeah. And then they just have a recording of him saying goodbye flatly. Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that. It's it pisses me <laughs> off. <laughs> But no, I just realized something. He screwed himself because not only is he on a fish plant, like not only was he afraid of fish and like he fell in love with a fish lady, but more than likely the planet he's going to is like fucking Subnautica. So it, it's he's Aquarius. Screwed. He's a he goes to Aquarius where the planet is full of goddamn water. I know, but you're not <laughs> like listening Subnautica. though. Yeah. Look, yeah. I I am afraid of ocean. I am afraid of ocean. I don't like it. No. I, I, I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, so we cut to the beach, boys. Everybody be served. Like a uh, so Jason is telling Zach and Trini how to properly adjust their diving equipment. So Jason's a diving instructor, a, a certified diving instructor, on top of everything that he already is. At a, he's a teenager. He, these kids know everything. They study, are A plus students. They have jobs outside of the school. They do like, uh, charity work. I'm, I'm my dude. Your characters could have flaws. Yes, very true. Yeah, get used to it in the early seasons where yeah. they're like perfect goody goods. And when I mean early seasons, I mean the entirety of the Zordon era. In space is when it gets a little bit darker. Actually, yeah, yeah. Andros is like the first fucking ranger with character flaws, but we'll get to that. Yeah, yes. After they are about to go in the water, we cut to uh, the park uh, next to the water where there's a bunch of negging ducks. And uh, Kimberly and Billy are having a picnic. Billy asks, what's for lunch? And Kimberly says, oh, fish and chips. And Billy goes like, damn it. <laughs> Billy's Wait. just like, no, I'll just, I'll just take the chips. Hold the fish. Yeah. Wait, so if he's afraid of fish, does that mean he's also afraid of eating fish or just being he's around? Eating fish. fish. I get Nothing. what you mean. Eating fish. I, it's <laughs> is he afraid that of the fish? That, uh, is he afraid the cooked fish is going to like eat his finger like the fucking fish that happen in the fucking flashback like oh, what are you orange. afraid of no hold it's on no 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 <laughs> i have to talk about this. it's it's like why are you afraid of cooked fish it's dead bereft of life it rests in <laughs> peace if it wasn't fried it'd probably be pushing up daisies as metabolic processes are no history it's off the twig it's kicked the bucket Shove him off the mortar coil! Run <laughs> down the curtain! <laughs> and joined the freaking choir invisible! 
But this is an... <laughs> this is an X fish. <laughs> I better replace it then. Oh my god. <laughs> I. I just, oh, just, just, oh just, give me a minute, give me a minute, I'll be right back. Like, like do you think your fear made you allergic? <laughs> oh my god, that was so worth interrupting me, I'm so happy you did that. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh my god, I almost pissed myself. <laughs> that, that's fair. That was beautiful, actually. But, okay. but hold on, hold on, Malcolm. You say he's afraid of eating fish. No, he has a fish girlfriend at the end. He's not afraid of eating her. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm bummed. He's afraid of eating fish now. He won't be afraid later. Yes. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. As Malcolm eloquently described, uh, Billy is afraid of even being around cooked fish. Yeah. Why uh, is that? Because when he was a kid. Origin story. So... When Billy was young, when he was like nine years old or whatever. I was only he... nine years old. Cut that bitch off! No, <laughs> do not bring that blight of a meme in my sight. <laughs> Wait, what meme? I was only nine years old. I love you fish so much. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, I love fish so much. Yeah, I know. Don't bring Shrek his love, Shrek his life into this house. You're oh. not allowed to bring that in this house. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, uh, Kermit. Moving right along. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Yeah. So, Billy, Billy's fish origins. When he was a young boy, he went to the to the pond and started making a whirlpool in the pond to test what he learned about whirlpools that day. And uh, a fish found his finger to be very taunting coming from above. So, the fish bit him on the finger. And the the young actor uh, picks up the picks up the fake plastic fish and pretends like it's biting his finger. <laughs> if a fish that big was on my fucking finger, I'd probably be afraid of fish my whole fucking life too. Honestly, there's nothing to say about this, so this isn't really a Zordon secret files. But the young the character the actor who played young Billy is actually named Billy. Yeah, Billy Nils, and th this is his only credit, okay. is this episode of Mighty Morphin. You just know, like, someone picked him out of, like, your craft table, or, like, his parents were like, you need to do something on the weekends, you can't just stay inside and... Uh, but yes, that is why Billy hates fish, is because he was bit on the index finger once, and Kimberly, un understandably, laughs her ass off at this. That is hilarious. Well, you see, off screen, she got to see the footage of the fish, of the, of the yeah. flashback. <laughs> of course, she's laughing. And they hear a scream. What was that? And off they go to figure out who this scream is. And they see Bulk screaming like he's in the middle of contractions during pregnancy. <laughs> In reality, and, he's just dressed and looking and sounding like what all Darby, Allen's fan, Darby Allen fans are. Th this outfit. Okay, let me describe this outfit. He's got his bomber jacket, but it's got a bunch of fish hooks in it. He's got his vest, his iconic bulk vest. Uh, he's got booty shorts. <laughs> he's wearing the fucking Raven Never Nude size 5X. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got, like, fucking dark brown thigh high boots i don't understand this outfit it's just for fishing it's yeah but like why what what screams fishing about that Absolutely maybe it's fishing nothing. gear you can get at spencer's probably honestly it's either hot topic fishing gear or spencer's fishing gear yes he eventually pulls up a no fishing sign <laughs> Uh, that, that's a good joke. They talk about a bunch of shit. And uh, <laughs> then... Sorry. Then, the no fishing yeah. joke is genuinely funny. Yeah, and the then, no fishing joke is very funny. I agree. Uh, then there's a bunch of other talk. And then Billy and Kimberly decide to leave. And Bulk and Skull go to cast out again. And then they hook their own assholes. <laughs> yeah. And they're too stupid to realize that the hooks are in their pants, so they just keep pulling, and they think that they have a big catch because they're pulling forward. <laughs> they literally fish themselves into the water. And I'm like, there okay. they go, there they go, <laughs> there they go. And when Skull starts laughing, Bulk says, "Fight down, tuna breath." <laughs> well, it looks like someone put themselves in a very fishy situation.
Da -da 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 -da. I'm loving it. We cut to Bandora Castle and Goldar is like, oh, send the fish down. Send it down. Yeah. Do it now. Do it. Man, they... <laughs> no. wait, wait, hold on. I'm I'm going to attempt an okay. I'm going to attempt an Arnold and Goldar <laughs> multi voice here. Okay, hold on. Right. Multi voice. Here we go. Here we go. No, I need to destroy the Power Rangers. No. <laughs> That's scary That's, how good that is. It is scary how you do that. I, yes, me to my empress. I am going to. I, fuck, that is way too weird to do. <laughs> Malcolm, I'm going to say this in the most honest way. This is probably how you hear my Jason voice, isn't it? Yes. I think I just spoke in tongues. Yep. <laughs> so we cut back to Billy and Kimberly walking along, talking about how they're going to help the uh, other members of their team get the scuba gear all ready to put away. And then they say, oh, they'll go for ice cream after. But unfortunately, <laughs> the putties are here. Do you have time to talk about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I forgot to mention at Pandora Castle, they said to send the putties down to Billy and Kimberly so that they're distracted. <laughs> and Rita says, we're going fishing for rangers. There's a putty fight here. And while I was watching this, I kind of like had a had an epiphany. So it's just a very normal fight at first. Billy is like, it's scary how David Yost is a very accomplished like acrobat slash gymnast. And it's scary how I can buy like he has never been in a fight before, but he actually does know these moves. It's like he's trying to fight a little badly and I can buy it. <laughs> Uncle Howard taught him a couple moves a couple episodes ago. Before, before he got fucking killed by Skull. Yes. Actually, it doesn't even feel like the Uncle Howard episodes was that, like, it feels like it's been like 10, 20 episodes since then. But what? When was the Uncle Howard episode? It was episode 15. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because we're on episode 40 now. 43. Yeah. The progression of Billy has been slow. Like, in some episodes, he's still a bit wimpy, but he doesn't not try anymore like we won't see billy run away anymore well i think in the beginning they didn't want billy to be able to fight uh that was really important for the creators uh that that's how my character was portrayed and so when we first started the show we trained in martial arts uh, tv martial arts as we call it for like a month and uh, i got started getting really good and then the creator of the show came in and saw i was getting too good and he got very angry and upset and he was like, no, no, he like had a yelling, a yelling fit. That's not what I want for this character. So then I got really scared as an actor, like I didn't want to get fired. So I just sort of stopped doing stuff. So in the beginning, they made Billy sort of be goofy when he was fighting, sort of accidental fighting. And then uh, over time, which was good for my character, you got to see Billy uh, develop. Uh, he took Jason, his friend Jason, taught him martial arts. Tommy taught him martial arts, and so over the course of the, the three years that I was on the show, or the three seasons, uh, Billy really grew, and I got to fight more. So as time went on, I got to do more fighting. They get to a point where Billy's like, It's hopeless, Kimberly. They must be underwater still. Mm. And then he thinks, Oh, wait, there is one shot, and then he flips over and grabs the fucking lunchbox. Your solution for solving this fight that you said you were vastly outnumbered in is a fucking lunchbox <laughs> he flips over a putty puts it on the guy's head kicks him down and there's a couple other moves and then the fight just ends <laughs> and kimberly even uh mentions like D billy you were awesome and then billy contacts zordon and he says my intuition tells me reader's up to something and reader is making plans <laughs> reader's up, reader's up. reader's up. Reader. 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 I cannot hear that anymore. And in my head, canon Reader is uh, if you combined uh, Rita with Skeeter from Doug. <laughs> <laughs> That's the blue guy, right? Peter was Doug's best friend, yes. Then we get... Meanwhile, at the command yeah, sorry. center. Da, 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 da. They teleport to the command center, and they're like, they're like what's going on? your balls there? <laughs> that, what? Uh, what's going on? On Zordon is just like, oh, there's an evil goo fish going around. Behold the viewing globe. And uh, this is where we get our first look at the toxic goo fish. And uh, I hate this design. <laughs> it's, it's so really, bad. It's awful. It's just a bunch of mishmashed fish parts it looks like it's a melting fish looks like someone tried to do like a fish kind of frankenstein thing and 
failed. You have failed this city. I guess the Zhu 2. It's up in the air whether the Zhu 2 monsters are going to be better or worse than the Zhu 1 monster. Some of them are, some of them aren't. This is definitely worse. Uh, then we get uh, Kimberly and Billy morphing and teleporting to where the goo fish is, while Zordon desperately tries to contact the other three, who are still scuba diving at this point. What the hell is that shit? And we get a bit of a fight with them suited. Everything's going decently well so far. It's going so well that Rita feels like she needs to interfere by casting a spell. <sighs> a spell that makes Billy's fear of fish even more pronounced. I just have to say, this is like the third time they've shown her chanting in front of this like flashing skull. The first time she used it, it was to summon her Green Ranger, which was huge. Then the second time, it, it was still big, but it, it, it was slightly less effective because it's it's her summoning Lokar, which I mean, in the Sentai, yeah, that's literally Satan, but Lokar hasn't really done much. And now she's using it to make Billy more afraid of fish. Boy, if you don't get- God, that's just, that's so sad. Yeah, it's, it's that's also something I wanted to point out in the first episode I wanted to point here is that I think I'll talk more about in the third episode because it's more prominent there. The plot for Rita is really starting to waver a bit after they got past the Doomsday two-parter. We'll, we'll get there. Rita now makes Billy more afraid of fish and Billy starts having a panic attack. No! is struggling to even deal right now. Luckily, Zordon has finally gotten a hold of the, of the other three rangers who are now out of the water. He explains the situation and the three morph. And this is when I noticed that, okay, usually when they morph out of order or like when people aren't there, it doesn't bother me. But the only way it bothers me is when Pterodactyl does not come after Mastodon. Mastodon! It just Freak. doesn't sound right. Honestly, I know. I don't blame you. I really don't. But when the order, it's like, it's not just pterodactyl for me. If it starts off with pterodactyl and mm -hmm. then like others are missing, say if it's like Mastodon, pterodactyl, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, Tyrannosaurus, the original order, mm -hmm. and then you remove, like, as you say, pterodactyl or any of the other middle ones mastodon pterodactyl saber tooth tiger tyrannosaurus like that order it just it doesn't sound right i know yeah. we're insane yeah. but it just doesn't I'm sound right i'm not alone i forgot to mention they actually go back to the command center for a second mm -hmm. so that they can talk about billy's fear of fish and how uh, zordon's like hey you gotta get over your fear of fish fucko man up did i <laughs> fucking stutter it just a fucking fish and Billy they, goes like yeah i'll try i'll try they go back into the fight and the goo fish has a bunch of putties and there's a big fight here with the goo fish and the putties but eventually the uh, goo fish gets the upper hand uh knocks away jason and uh he uses his blue juices <laughs> blue ooze i believe he calls it his like venom or something yeah and zordon mentions it that it's his venom and it immobilizes anything it touches so it, it covers their feet and then their feet get covered in like a thick layer of blech. then everything is going wrong but kimberly tries to help the other four but unfortunately the goofish has starfish that go right on to kimberly's nipples right in the tits <laughs> Right in the tits, and uh, then they blow up. Her tits blow up, and therefore, they're tit grenades. Okay. <laughs> and then he throws more tit grenades and blows up her tits more. Take that! I'm so sorry, Amy Jo Johnson. You're not going to hear this, but I'm so sorry. But yes, everyone's down except for Billy, and Billy is, like, struggling with his fear. Jason's like, ah, come on, you got to do it. You got to fight your fear, Billy. I gotta say this. I gotta put in my two cents here about the Billy thing. Oh, Jason here goes comes up. the fucking rant again. <sighs> Jason goes like, Billy, stop being a punk. Billy looks down. It's like, uh, okay. Yes! <laughs> this is bullshit. Automatically starts fighting the fish. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck that! Fuck that! You got... You, you got rid of your fear this quick, you fucker! <laughs> I know, I know it's said no, it but god do. damn it, no, that's not how, that's not how. Fuck it, was life it was life it was debilitating for years. It took you two fucking seconds. What the fuck? 
It only took Rita making it worse for him to actually want to fight it. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he just pops up uh, left and right, just uppercutting him and like, yeah. Hey, little boy, are you afraid of these things that are common throughout most of the planet? Well, let me give you fucking nightmares with this goddamn fucking, I was going to say Philip Glass. Out of nowhere, he's like, I've overcome my fear. And it cuts to a shot of Rita lifting her eyes away from the telescope and just going. <laughs> Then she throws down her staff to make the monster grow. And this is the first time that I noticed it. And I know this is like a thing in uh, in Ju 2. But this is the first time I actually watched her lips. And it actually did look like she said magic wand to make my fish grow. Make my monster So the fish grows. And uh, we need dinosaur power. So here comes here comes the, the zords. And uh, they have some new music. This is pretty awesome because it's the theme to the Go Green Ranger Go theme song later on when Tommy returns later. It's early version of it. Did you notice this? Now, I, I didn't at first, and I went back and listened to it, though, and yeah, holy shit. Yeah, I imagine it's like the guitar riff that's the main thing, because yeah. that I heard that guitar riff, and I'm like, if this is the song that they're talking about, I think I'm going to love this song. Oh, yeah, you're, gonna you're definitely going to love, love this with this song. I marked the hell out when I heard this. I go like, oh, my God. Also, when they're, when they're getting into the Zord, Kimberly occasionally has something witty to say about certain monsters, and so her saying for this episode is, Let's play this flounder. Oh, yeah. We forgot to mention that the Goofish is voiced by Robert Axelrod, the legend himself. Have we done a character deep dive on Robert Axelrod? Not yet. We we save it for Lord Zed. Definitely. If we did, we did it for Lokar. Well, we talked about Lokar being Axelrod, but I definitely don't remember doing a deep dive. No, we didn't. I'm just saying when Lord Zed comes in, then we'll do a deep dive. Yeah, we will save it. We will save it for Lord Zed. His time will come. Megazord is is created, and we get the fight with the Goofish, and it's honestly just it's very mid. Very true. It's it's just a bunch of fighting, and then the the, (laughs) the Goofish wails its jizz on him. And uh, covers him in the blue goop, and uh, it immobilizes the Megazord. It goes down, and then, then the stupidest part of the episode, in my opinion, happens where they're down. Jason's like, I don't know how we're going to be able to... Sorry, Jason goes, uh, I don't know how we're going to be able to do it. <laughs> and, then Z- and then Zach goes, Morgan power, I convert the goo to energy. I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. What the fuck did you just <laughs> say, Zach? What the <laughs> fuck, Zach? What and does that Jason's mean? Like, no, yeah, let's do it. And then uh, it just, explain, please. It, explain. And then, it, and then it works. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's working. Where's the logic in that? And then, and then they reverse the footage of it falling down. They literally took the same shot of it falling down and reversed it. They really need yeah. to fucking get that chimpanzee off the fucking reverse button. Whoever <laughs> is fucking pressing it. So I just have a bunch of question marks for whatever the fuck Zach said working. <laughs> the Zord gets back up and they kill the Goofish, and that's that's the end of the fight. That that is, I can't believe we all, but all three of us had anger-inducing rant-ish moments in this episode. <laughs> yeah. that's hilarious. Uh, Honestly. So we come back to Ernie's juice bar and Billy comes back with Ernie and they're both in fishing gear. Billy says, hey, look, how a good fish. His other friends are very happy. And he pulls out this like giant burlap sack. And I'm like, that's a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah. oh, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, Ernie goes like, I'm going to go cook this. Uh, it'll be on the house. Damn it, Ernie. This is why you got in debt later on they're the main characters you got to yeah. put it on the house for the main characters. he goes off to do that bulk and skull come in bulk and skull are like hey that fish you caught may have been you know all right but i have the best fish i've ever caught i caught the king of the sea and then bulk says show him the fish skull skull pulls up pulls out a giant can of tuna <laughs> oh skull bulk's like i told you to get the biggest fish and then skull said i did this is the only fish i know <laughs> which if you think about it that's really sad it makes me think that his family is poor yeah. it's uh, it's unfortunate so bulk and grabs the burlap sack and is like oh well, well let's see what you caught then nerdo and then he sticks his face in the burlap sack and billy's like hey you shouldn't do that then you hear a pinch uh, yeah. <laughs> a live lobster in there. by the lobster help the poor man yeah. 
Yeah, help the man. The guy, like, okay. Larry's in being an asshole again. He took too many roids. Yeah. <laughs> Larry. Larry the lobster. Larry the lobster. Good, good reference. In food biology, they teach you that the lobster has two claws. One is a thin, like, smaller one that's meant to cut things. And one is the big, wide one that is meant to crush. And the crusher one is the one on his nose. Therefore, Bulk has broken his nose. Ah, uh, but yes, let's go back to... Uh, Skull's family it really sucks if that is the case because like he grew up in a probably a poor household and he had like a shit upbringing and that's like that's probably why he wants to murder people what's funny is I actually think his family is rich in no, canon with the not at oh all. they he, aren't no he becomes rich later on but they're his family's just uh, middle class low class whatever. he's the outlier well, that was something's fishy and uh, next we move on to season one episode 44 lions and blizzards air date February 10th 1994 or right afterwards damn yeah like the, the last three episodes were all aired one day after the other yeah because monday to friday i always think hell. of like saturday morning cartoons back in the 90s like it would only aired on weekends no nah, no we talked about this in the previous pod it is from monday to friday doomsday they took three months off to get new footage from toei that's it. okay mm -hmm. right i i just it weirds me out when like back in the day kid shows ran all week it was directed by robert hughes but written by shell danielson i have some yeah, words yeah. before andres you begin go ahead go ahead counselor so i was talking about before how i believe the writing for rita is starting to drop off a bit and the villains in general this episode to me is one of the weakest written episodes in the entirety of the show it's just if you listen to the dialogue if you pay attention to what happens and believe me we did fucking angela uh, <laughs> we'll get to that anything after doomsday in my opinion so far has been a step down there's some good stuff but no i i think doomsday was peak for the first season until proven otherwise i kind of agree with that it's been a bit of a step down on a whole mm -hmm. but, but again the season so, isn't over yeah it's not over but yet. it's not it's not clean up clues crew so it's still fun so we open up in the park and they're doing the odd ball games another thing that the goody goods are doing they do everything in this city hey to be fair the oddball game does sound pretty fun so jason and bulk are running through the tires i forget what it's called but they're running through the tires and jason of course makes it and bulk falls flat on his face and eats grass literally eats grass then we cut to zach macking on fucking angela uh fucking angela god damn it all right so i've been pretty much Wait. like neutral on angela since then this episode i fucking hate her let's celebrate and suck some dick you have learned you have learned yeah but they do the wheelbarrow and trini's waiting for jason yeah, the wheelbarrow race. yeah. and skull's waiting for both <laughs> trini's like gunning it and skull falls flat on his face and so jason and trini win so their team wins for that round and bulk is mad at skull and i noticed his background yeah. extra at the 146 the one who wears sunglasses like so bored to be there, but he's trying. Yeah, he's trying. He's yeah. trying he's to get it. He's too cool for this stupid kids show. Yes, he's yeah. way too cool for this kids show. Principal Kaplan comes out and he's in a sweater, and I'm like, the best time to wear a striped sweater is His all is in your cup. Oh my! Wait, one song. Shit. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Wrong song. So Principal Kaplan says, when he came, we received the coveted. Noble Lion Trophy. Tug of War time for Tug the Noble Lion time. Trophy. Yeah. In reality, it would probably be named after, like, the fucking school or something. Fox talking mm -hmm. trash, saying, like, hey, we're going to beat you. And Jason goes, like, huh, good one. Zach, flirting with Angela. Who's Angela, on Bulk, Bulk. Yeah. yeah. Stop simping, Zach. Come on. Brother, ugh. She's, She's like, not yeah. worth it. Zach saying, like, come on, baby. Get over on the winning side. And Angela goes, like, Bring on. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Give him a chance! Zach is literally the nicest, coolest kid, and probably my favorite character of the five, and he gets the shit end of the stick so often with Angela. He deserves better, damn it. Yeah. He really does. You and know what? Fuck it. Put him in a relationship with Jason. Yeah. He fucking is a better partner than Angela. I could, I could see that, yeah. So what I noticed was this target war thing. In the background, there's another background actor at 236 that looks like a young Tommy Wiseau. Why are you so lonely? Tell me. 
<laughs> so <laughs> the strong oh, guy. Look at the sexy Lisa. He's like, hi, oh, oh hi, hi Mog. Because he has a oh, long hi, hair Dan. and he looks like this weird vampire. He's just standing there. Well, that's what Tommy <laughs> Wiseau looks like, a weird vampire. Yeah. No, what do you mean? Tommy Wiseau is a weird vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably is Tommy Wiseau. It's Wish.com Dracula. Small sidebar, in case you didn't hear about it. One of the failed side plots that Tommy was trying to pitch for the room is that he's actually a vampire and has a flying car. You gonna go with me? Go where? my house i'm not going anywhere with you that yeah. would be something tommy was would say yeah Tommy was supposed to be a vampire that has a flying car <laughs> wait <laughs> what? hold on wait are, are we sure it isn't tommy was so then he fucking tried to steal the rad bug what are you talking about it, well no rad remember rad about the room there was supposed to be a flying car oh. so in this show tommy was got a time machine okay okay i see it we do not care so we cut to bandora castle and we just go like huh a lion trophy that gives me an idea. And Goldar goes like, yes, you can do it. It's your Rita. I mean, reader yeah. or Rita. Reader. Reader. <laughs> you can summon Go You can summon the monster of the week, Gotan the Stormbringer. Sorry, the Lightbringer. <laughs> yes, it's called the Lightbringer. I made the comic, but no, we do not mention I have, it. I have absolutely no reaction for this joke. Because there is no joke. Because I'm the Lightbringer. I do history of I have no me. reaction for this joke whatsoever. So we cut to uh <laughs> <laughs> So we cut back to the games and Mr. Kaplan blows you're allowed his whistle. To laugh at it. You're not involved in the joke. You're just allowed to laugh at it. I know Linkara doesn't like that joke, so I I I, I can't. It's just out of respect. You ain't looking for trouble. Spoke like a gentleman. Okay, okay look, I'm outing myself as a Linkara fan right now. I don't care. He got me into comics. Fuck you guys. He's awesome. Okay. I've, ne I've never watched Linkara. So Mr. Kaplan blows his whistle in front of all the kids. Hey, phrase it! And they start to talk yeah. war. Jason's team wins because, you know, steroids and they're the Power Rangers and all. <laughs> and Angela fly into the mud. And Mr. Kaplan also... Is that also... The powers that the coins give him? Steroids? <laughs> yes. Uh, good old steroids uh, is that why tommy was always nagging it was just roid rage so zach goes over to angela in the mud and goes like hey you want to bang and uh, angela goes like fuck off fuck off <laughs> like she's happy for him and reacts to him his advances when he isn't trying it, it's terrible so the gang is like hanging out because they're winning and they go like, oh, we're better than Bulk. Ha ha ha. Screw him. And then Kim, I think, says like, hey. Hey, the trophy's gone. Who would have done it? They go, obviously, who do you think? Bulk and Skull. And Jason goes like, they would never steal the trophy. Kind of funny because they did. And then. Yeah, the yeah, they cut to the fucking pond and it's there. Smart enough to keep the prize. <laughs> this is funny because they said, oh, they would never steal it. And they did steal it. And Turbo TJ goes like, hey. Bulk and Skull may be dumbasses, but they would never steal. I present to you this episode. Bulk and Skull make mistakes, but they're not thieves. Smart enough to keep the prize. <laughs> yeah, no, he's right. They never steal. They just murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the crime? In the Where's the crime in that? Folks, where's the lie? Tell me when I start telling lies. Oak and Skull stole the trophy. They go to the, the pond and like they're all full of dirt and they're washing off. They cut the Pandora castle and Goldar goes like, Reader, summon the Gotan monster. It is time. Summon and your it, evil monster, Gotan. Yes. Okay, now it's Gotan. Yes, it's Gotan. Yeah. Okay, it was always the... Gotan. It's just they called him the Stormbringer <laughs> earlier. So Jason and Kim are in the park somewhere looking for Bulk and Skull and the punnies show up and holy crap this is where it starts it has begun we have been Correct. waiting yeah. for this moment this very moment this will be the moment starting now Ron Wassman Ron. you are a god because your fight music finally shows up in this series <laughs> Oh, my. thank you, Ron Walla Walla Washington. My God, I jizzed in my pants. I go like, damn! I find it really fitting that in the last episode of the podcast, you put in a jizz in my pants moment when you mentioned that song, and now yeah. we're here. Yes, exactly. Jizz in my pants. So, jizz in my pants. So this is fight music. It, the fight scenes are way better with the putties now, because, like, Jesus Christ, the fight scenes are... 
amazing. This is something that I'm really happy they took from uh, Super Sentai. Because in Sentai, for years in um, the episodes, they've had insert songs. And where they would just have original pieces of music with lyrics for their fights. Uh, Kamen Rider does it. Sentai does it. They've been doing it for years. It's something that Power Rangers lacks even in the later seasons. I don't know, like Zio, they had pretty good fight music like... Uh... Rangers, fight. Like Problem is, is that the show doesn't have Ron Wasserman forever. Right, up until space. And then the music definitely drops off, especially in the fucking Disney era. <laughs> <laughs> we cut to Billy, Trini, and Zach going to the playground because they're looking for the trophy. And then the show up and the fight music starts again yeah! and this is fight. the best fight in the series yet because uh we see trini doing her thing we see zach doing his thing and then we see billy doing his jackie chan style of fighting yeah using in everything in the environment to his advantage yeah even with the fight music it looks so bad <laughs> doesn't he like doesn't he like throw someone up the slide uh that was trini i believe <laughs> That was so stupid. There's a curve in the slide. I think you would just make a giant dent in the slide. Like, I once did that to my brother. The problem with it is that you end up hitting the side of the slide where the loop is. When you throw the person, you gotta either, like, get a running head start, or you gotta slide the fucker on the beginning with some force. God, okay, this reminds me of a really scary story. When I was in elementary school, there was this big yellow slide. Mm -hmm. It was like a normal straight slide, and everything was fine with it. Then I go, uh, like, junior high, I ended up revisiting my elementary school because I felt like I needed to do that. Mm -hmm. And I go to the playground, and there's fucking razor blades in the yellow slide. Oh, wow, okay. Whoa! Yeah, it's, I'm like, what the fuck? That is... Dude, that's fucked that's, up. That's something straight out of New York Jack City when Ice-T is looking at the kids playing. That sounded wrong, but he's watching the kids play, and he sees needles on the on the Yo. floor so billy's using the environment to his advantage bends down and like gets back up he uses like anything that's around like the other rangers do mm -hmm. it too but billy makes it look cool yeah he does yeah billy i think should have stuck to this type of fighting style the jackie chan type of using everything to your advantage would fit him perfectly as one mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a geek, like a big time geek. So he's constantly thinking, always like using his brain. He's not that skilled in martial arts yet. Like the, the mixture use anything of anything to your advantage. Also, exactly. It could have made some great fight scenes, but as far as I know, they don't do it too often. Also, this is like 1994. Isn't this the year where Jackie Chan finally made it big in America? Because he was so big in Japan, but Rumble in the Bronx was his first American film that he got Went known big. for. Yeah, that got him known. So Jason and Kim are fighting off the putties, and then they beat him, and the putties disappear. And Jason goes like, damn, that was weird. Damn. No, no, he doesn't do it like that. He does it like, how, Adam? What? Yeah, damn, that was weird. Yes. I I was no, I you had to do the Jason. Fuck so, you. So anyway, Bogus. I did, okay, no, I I didn't hear the. Okay, hold on, I'll do. Damn, that was a load of shit, huh? <laughs> there like, we go. Like there. most of the time, you son of a bitch, I hate it. And the one time I cue you up to do, you're like, what? Huh? <laughs> fuck <laughs> you, you fucking fucking fuck. Love you. I, yeah. <laughs> I love you too. I didn't do it on purpose. I love. I love you too. <laughs> All right. They cut to the Bandora Castle. Goldor goes, "It's time." Is, is it time? Time. It's Vader. Time. Vader time. <laughs> <laughs> is it boss time? Yeah. <laughs> Rita uses her glow, and we see the goddamn skull again. First, they just used it for like, the, as you said, serious moments, and now it's just. Blech. Just yeah. use it for whatever. It There's loses no its importance. There's no gravitas. It has no importance anymore when she brings it out. Exactly. She just whips out her skull. It's... Sometimes I'll start a sentence, and I don't even know where it's going. It's not funny. It's not she... important. It's just there. We cut the bulk of skull still washing themselves, and then they hear some noise. They go like, what is that noise? And they turn around, and the earth is shaking. And the trophy turns into the Gotan monster. I like the design. Mm -hmm. It's a lion and a goddamn goat head in the middle. I like this, and they both have a different voice. 
The lion head is voiced by Richard Epcar, who we've talked about before. But the goat head is someone we've never seen before. It is Tony Oliver. A good old Tony Oliver. He's been around a long time. He's been around since the 70s doing a lot of work in anime. Mm. Like he did work on Sailor Moon. Like that's how old school he was with anime. Damn, all right. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, what he's done in Power Rangers and, you know, the like. Tommy. The earliest casting I have here is he he was actually in episode six of VR Troopers. He was a character named Dice. And I have a couple other things here. He was in Power Rangers in Space, played two characters. In episode four, Shellshocked, he plays Leonardo. You want Rangers? You gotta go through turtles. Mutants! <laughs> nice. <laughs> and in episode 30, Dark Spectre's Revenge Part 2, he plays Frightwing. When it comes to Power Rangers, he was also in an episode of Time Force. In episode 16, Bodyguard in Blue, where he played Clawlocks. In Power Rangers Wild Force, he played the Signal Org in episode 18, Secrets and Lies. But for Mighty Morphin, in season 1, he's played the following characters. The Rock Star in episode 30. Fang in the Yokes on You. He was obviously Goten's goat head in this episode. And the only other episode, I don't know why it's in episode, season one, but he was in season one, episode zero, the lost episode. Oh, that's the pilot. Yeah, the pilot where he played Fly Guy. He's in 17 episodes of season two. The vast majority of these, he plays a character named Saba. Activate the Tiger Sword. Tiger Sword, power up! Ooh, okay, Ooh. all right. He's Saba, all right, let's go, let's go. That's why he sounds so familiar. Okay, all right. Yeah, I don't know who Saba is, but I'm sure I'll get there. And then oh, the only other character, the only other character he plays in season two is in the Return of the Green Ranger three parter. He plays with the Wizard of Deception. Okay, that guy, I love that guy. And then in season three, he plays Saba in only two episodes. Yeah. So he's done all of those. In other sort of uh, credits, he, like I said, has done a lot of anime stuff, like way too much anime stuff. But most people, at least in the uh, mainstream, would probably know him from Naruto, specifically Naruto Shippuden, where he plays the fourth Hokage, Minato Namikaze, a.k.a. Naruto's father. In general, done a lot of anime, anime voice work, video game voice work. So that is Tony Oliver's Zordon Secret File. So back to the Gotan monster, he like puts him in like a little tornado thingy majig and they get thrown into a pond again. And they're screaming and Skull just <laughs> grabs Bulk's jacket and just... <laughs> drags him. <laughs> yeah, he just drags him. It's hilarious. <laughs> no. It is very funny. I just love he doesn't fight it. Every single time it happens, he, he just accepts it. Yeah, every time. We cut to Jason and Zach boxing and they're punching a bag. Jason goes like, hey man, you gonna ask out Angela? You gotta do it. And Zach goes like, eh, nah man. I kind of gave up on that. Kimberly comes over and goes like, hey. But your dream diva is headed our way. Angela's there looking like Brand X from Food Fighting. Damn it. <laughs> oh, dear God, no. So Angela comes in. Zach goes like, hey, no, I'm, I'm no longer interested in her. That was a while back. And proceeds to like show off by spinning and stuff. And Jason calls him. I was like, gave up, huh? And then, <laughs> seriously, this shit right here. Angela goes over to Zach. Uh, yeah, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, Angela goes over to Zach and goes like, hey. How about you and me catching a matinee or something? What kind of shit is that? Jason's facial expression is the best. Uh, so I, I urge in, to I, kill I, 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 Rising. Yeah. I have in my notes actual whore Angela. Zach is surprised because he's been getting nothing this entire time. All of a sudden asks him out and goes like, the hell is going on here? Angela grabs his arm and they walk away and Zach goes, hey. Don't call me. I'll call you. And I'm like, no, Zach, come on. Zach, don't go. That vile temptress will fucking destroy your balls. Yeah. <laughs> Kim goes like, way to go, Zach, man. Mm, I'm fucking angry. Already. So we cut to the command center and Zordon's like saying, hey, there's a monster out there. We got to call the rangers into the command center. And Alpha's like losing his shit. like, oh my God, it's awful. He looks horrible. It's a Goten! <laughs> I just realized, yeah. goat can Jesus Christ, I'm slow. You're, wow, okay, you're right. like, uh, you're like, what was the name that you just, yeah, Mick Canick earlier? Yeah, I had a Malcolm moment, it's like, goat 
<laughs> and I get it now. Damn it. Yeah. So we cut Trini. to the juice bar and Trini and Billy come in because it's raining outside. But we never see the rain because it was a sunny day beforehand. Man is allowed to control the weather. The entire earth will be in peril. Ernie comes in and goes like, oh, there's our tornado. Watch, get us all go to the basement. Everybody quick. Tornado. <laughs> and the gang is like going like, this is obviously not a tornado. It's something that Reader is doing. Is that just her name now? Yes, Reader. You're just calling her Reader now? Okay, fair. <laughs> they Point it out once and then all of a sudden your name is Goat Fucker. So they teleport to the command center and Zordon's like <laughs> saying, hey, you guys must go fight the Gotan monster. And they go like, what about Zack? And Zordon goes like, I'm going to cock block his ass and tell him to get the fuck out of there. Uh, Kim... With her facial expression again at uh, 10 minutes and 47 seconds, like she's just going Durr! again. It's just so weird. weird. I agree. So we cut to the movie theater, the most well lit theater. Zach puts his arm over Angela, and Angela goes, like, Not the day. It's We're not that cold, you fucking horn dog. <laughs> kill rising. Yeah. The gang's like going, like, Oh, we can't get Zach. And like, Zoran goes, like, You guys go ahead. I'll try. To get Zack out of there. Better for him not to be with Angela anyway. It's better this way. It's better this way. You'll thank me later. This is the way. So, they morph. And they go to the mountains of Japan. And they fight the Gotan monster. <laughs> fight. A pretty and good fight. Kim pulls out her arrow. They both fire. Yeah, this is what I thought was like white dick versus black dick. Because his bow is giant and black. And hers is puny and white. And <laughs> Damn it. Right. And they hit each other. Jason goes like, hey, time to bring out the gats and pulls out his gun and starts shooting. Here's my issue. The arrows collide and instead of like bouncing off each other like they would in real life, they just slide off of each other. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Arrows don't work that way. Gotan yeah. is near some logs and he, he found some wood. He's got wood. It's, basically it's log. It's log. It's log, log, log. It's it's the strangest reference to Ren and Stimpy, but for some reason I get it every single time. So Gotan jumps and shoots from his eyes, and you said it was like a Pokemon sound. There was a Pokeball sound, just like the one with the eggs. They're all down, they're getting their asses kicked, and then Gotan, from his goat mouth, shoots this red thing at them. Down. It's supposed to be a red tornado, but it just looks like a siren, so I just thought of Scott Steiner. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> They're spinning. They're spinning towards freedom. Whirling <laughs> towards freedom. You guys need new memes. <laughs> yep. It's Very a true. good meme, though. We cut back to the theater, and Angela's being scared, and Zach goes like, hey, yes, this is working. This is working. All of a sudden, his communicator goes off, and he finally hears it. Angela yeah. also hears it. And Zach goes, it's... Is my popcorn alarm? Oh, what? Zach then goes to leave the theater, and there's this either very pretty man or very ugly girl. What the hell is even that? You decide, audience. You're either a very lucky man or a very unlucky woman. So Zach goes out in the hallway, which is obviously the high school set, but with movie posters on the wall. This, this is where I bring up once again the running joke of cheap, 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 cheap. Mm -hmm. he calls Zordon, and Zordon goes like, "Hey." Stop simping. Get over here. We need you. I heard you're trying to get your dick wet. Don't you know you have to be chased to be a Power Ranger? Wait, but, but Zordon, I, I really need... Did I fucking, fucking stutter? stutter? Don't ask about how getting new memes. <laughs> so Zach Moore, immediately on the top of the mountain with his uh, power cannon, you get with this one scene at 14.13. It's clearly blood on his hand. On his... Yeah, there's just blood on his glove. Yeah, he's missing one finger. As the thing is folded yeah, back. The fucking fingers floppy because they're like, oh, Zach doesn't have a fifth finger, so show that. And also they go like, yeah, we want new Ju two footage and you can do stuff in it. And they put blood in it. It's like, hey, we can't show that. This is a kid's show. And then we get this next bit that fucking pisses me off with the editing again. It's the fucking 90s editing where they just repeat the same shot three times in a row again. Yeah, yeah I'm like, fuck off. Ooh, More okay. episodes of this, boys. And then we cut to Bandora Castle and Scorpion is there. Yowie, wowie. Why is she just there? I don't know. <laughs> it was something. Yeah. Do something. <laughs> Do something. Rita's mad, and she throws her staff down to make Gotan grow. That calls upon the Zords. Act specifically. We turn into a power now! 
Gotan goes like, bring on the snowstorm. <laughs> so we get a Megazord fight scene where there's snow coming along. He did like a big freeze blast and then he froze the Megazord. I was frozen today. He was indeed frozen. And, and all of a sudden, Gotan brings out his hockey stick. It's like, huh, what, wait, what, what, what? Damn, I, okay. I, I, He's also hoping for the Oilers to win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Like, of all the weapons these monsters have had, they're all pretty good. And this guy just gets a goddamn hockey stick. My <laughs> god. So, the rangers go like, hey, we gotta get out of this. Like, uh, let's spin! Spin the motherfucker! Spin the wheel, make the deal. <laughs> yeah. And for some reason, this confuses Gotan because of the spinning, or he gets, like, really dizzy just watching them spin. <laughs> this makes no sense, and yet it's working. Uh, really? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> the Megazord just punches Gotan, and he goes down. Zack calls for the power sword. They didn't call it a Megazord this time, thank god. Zach specifically calls the sword and I think Malcolm was making a big deal about this like this is the first time that Jason doesn't call the sword a different ranger does really weird like if you think about it like the whole show Jason has been like the leader usually calls the Zord down and usually always calls the power sword I can't think of a time when he didn't other than this episode it was almost a culture weird. shock again yeah. this is due to footage show they have Zach doing all of the work here. He felt his brain break. So they uh, slice Gotan up and he dies. And then we cut back to Bandor Castle and we get a. Rangers give me such a headache! That was the 15th, I have a headache. So we cut back to the command center and Zordon's going like, hey, yeah, good job, Rangers. And Zach was like, yeah, we did a great job. Oh, shit, man. I left Angela back at the feeder. I gotta get out of here. Get my dick oh, wet. Oh, God. Uh, so he teleports out of there, and this is where I get really pissed off. And you guys, too. Because you had enough uh, of this bullshit. He comes back uh, into the theater. Uh, with the movie's, like, almost over when he gets back. So he, I'm pretty sure he was gone for, like, 20 minutes, and he goes, like, the long, there was a long line, which is a good reason. And Angela's having none of it, grabs the popcorn, puts the bucket on Zach's head, and fuck like you. The and like leaves. dumps all the popcorn over him first humiliating him then putting the popcorn bucket on his head humiliating him then walking away fucking humiliating him oh my god do i hate this fucking woman uh, i don't like angela uh, now you know why i don't uh, ever liked her because angela more like you... fucking angelus from fucking angel yes. angela no fuck is you no. are a fucking and i call her angelus because i fucking hated angelus no, Angelus was awesome. He was a badass. Oh, he was a badass, but I still hated him because he was not Angel. Angela, the actress herself, I'm pretty sure she's a nice woman. She's a great Oh, lady. yeah, no, I, I'm it's just, here. Uh, it's just her character is like, God damn. Everybody got that? Let, let yeah, it be know. known that no hate is ever towards the actual people portraying these people. Yeah. It's just to the characters. <laughs> yes, not, of course. We're, we're, we're not like the tribalistic wrestling fans who think they can't distinguished character from Ooh, reading yeah, you can't distinguish you. the character I say that reading. but i literally just shat on darby allen earlier in this sense that was a joke hey, no but that's that that's understandable you're trying to get hit by more cars than him yes yes <laughs> yes he's my mortal and nemesis he's been hit by two buses and i've been hit by one car that is not fair it should be two and two damn it hold on i gotta talk about this i've been walking the sidewalk for like fucking the past couple months now or, or like month actually a month i've been walking the sidewalks on purpose just begging like oh no hopefully no one hits me nothing what the hell's wrong with you fuck get worse like <laughs> i live in <laughs> the lower mainland area good thing doxing yourself again there you go yeah i don't you can cut it out yeah, i'll just yeah i yeah just cut, cut it all sorry words um i live in the lower mainland area of vancouver british columbia canada this is not a good place to live where good driving doesn't exist no good drivers exist and the funny thing is is that all the bad drivers are paranoid of other bad drivers so i should be hit by now are you trying to commit <laughs> fraud here again it is my choice my body my choice with what i want to do with it if i want to get hit by a goddamn car i will do so damn it so zach just enjoys his popcorn voice it's the bucket on his head and continues watching the movie <laughs> i hope it's not like a rom-com otherwise he's gonna be fucking weeping afterwards so we come back to the juice bar and uh the gang is doing something with ernie i don't know what they're doing but for the first time i ever see a police officer in this show now if anybody can positively identify these two gentlemen first time that they're called friends to the gang don't you recognize us it's us your friends you know the kids who 
quote unquote bully you every single day. Yeah. In reality, you bully us. Billy goes like, "Yeah, sadly, officer, we do know what these two assholes. Yeah, we know them." And the cop mm-hmm. goes, "Okay, that's fine. Let's him go." Uh, Bolt goes, "Good." And then all of a sudden, he starts dancing. <laughs> goes over the ladder where Ernie is, drops the water on him. He pulls out a frog out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from. He's a frog. But Bulk looks like he doesn't mind because he's happy to see a frog. He didn't get his pig last time. Yeah, he, he actually he's actually like animals. It, it can be his bee if he's Majin Bulk. He can be, it can be his dog. No, guys, you guys are completely missing it here. That's Daggeron. Don't I don't know Daggeron is. Don't me rhyme you have Mystic Force. I like Daggeron. Are we going to get in this with you again? Wait, no, I like Daggeron. I, it's like, just don't remind me of Mystic Force. But anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm going to get into you with again if you say it one more goddamn time. We're going to have another rant by Malcolm incoming when we do Mystic Force. Bulk is happy to see the frog. It ends in a happy note. Dun, 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 dun. I like the first time. Uh, I am going to go back on this episode. I'm sorry. I have to open up Zordon's secret files one more time. Tommy, go! All right. Ooh. Round two. I, I missed something very important. At the very beginning, during the tug of war, uh, there's a specific extra that mm. I wanted to bring up because it, it blew my mind when I looked at this. There's an extra in the tug of war scene. Who The actor's name is Stephen Wehmeyer. Stephen W-E-H-M-E-Y-E-R. He has four credits to his name as an actor. First was this tug of war extra scene in Mighty Morphin. The next acting credit he has three years later is in fucking Titanic. <laughs> Really? The 1997 movie? Yeah, the Leonardo DiCaprio Titanic. He plays a steerage band member. Oh, the okay. Band yeah, the band. Steerage, yeah. From the, yeah. the poor section, like down there, yeah. Then in 2001, he's in a TV series called Providence, part of a band in an Irish pub. I see a theme here. His final acting credit, most recent, was in a short called False Awakenings in 2017, where he played a teacher. So... He went from Mighty Morphin to Titanic. Even for an extra, that's a big step. That was the end of the three episodes. Final thoughts? Not bad. Uh, I like, like to say, like, with a pig surprise, I don't know why Malcolm hates the pudgy pig, but I enjoyed that episode just to see him back, and it's pretty funny. Just because of the reuse of Ju-1 footage for no reason. And then mm. something fishy, <laughs> the whole origin story of Billy just being afraid of fish just got me dying laughing. <laughs> Not a, the fish. Not the fish. It lions and blizzards. It's a good filler. I like the Gotan monster, and it was like, <laughs> oh god, fuck you, Angela. <laughs> yeah, no, Angela is you fuck off. But they were pretty fun filler episodes. That's basically my thoughts on there. Honestly, I'm on the same boat here. I I joke with Pudgy Pig, but in reality, just I I just think the costume is so stupid when it's the American version. It just makes me laugh. That's why I joke about it. <laughs> this was a fun episode. The monster suits are not my favorite in this block. Even the lion one it is not the best. Sorry, guys. I I think I enjoyed the plots more than anything in these, just just because they were fun, lighthearted filler. The stuff that this season does best. Stuff that this season does best is the filler, in my opinion. I yes. think that this is the most fun filler out of the... Oh, no, 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 not, not out of this season. Good this chunk season of episodes. Because have... we've dealt with, like, some really <laughs> sluggish blocks as of late. Especially Clean Up Club. Yeah, you hate that episode. I, yeah, I understand. Yes. Yeah, for multiple <laughs> reasons. So here are my thoughts, and I'm also going to intersperse with my thoughts the uh, overall star rating on IMDb, because I feel like I want to spice up my final thoughts a little bit. Big surprise on IMDb has an average of 6.0 stars. That's the review, 6.0 stars. And it kind of feels like it. It's good. It's just not, like, perfect. I do like P- Pudgy Pig coming back. I, there are a couple of funny jokes in the episode that I remember forgetting and liking. I like Norman as a whole, and I like Bulk and Skull's character arc. I don't like the end of it, obviously, but I like how it shows that they're actually human. So that's great. Something Fishy uh, has a rating of 6.3 on IMDb. It honestly is a fairly decent episode. I will say that the returning of the status quo is pretty fucked. Like, we all have something that we're really angry about in this episode, and that's perfectly understandable. 
dependable. But I think this is a fun little story. If you can turn your brain off, it's a fun little story for Billy. If you don't take it in context with any other part of Power Rangers lore, it honestly works fine. Lions and Blizzards is also very entertaining. You get the fight music, which is always great. I, I do like Gotan as a, as a monster of the week. I don't think he has the ability to like be anything staying, which is honestly fair. But it, it's a good design, and I think there were some pretty good fights in this in this episode. Like the playground fight is, I I will attest my favorite fight in the series so far. The Zord fight was okay, but you know it's about what you expect with Zhu Two footage at this point. I think this block has seriously set how Zhu Two is gonna be in my head, where it's like it's gonna feel better when they're fighting in physical, like in person and worse when they're fighting with the robots than the than the Zhu one. Also, Lions and Blizzards has a 6.6 .6 rating on IMDb and apparently is the best episode we covered today. Yeah, so that's uh that's how I feel about it. But that about covers it for today. This was a big one. Yeah, so with that, we're done for this block of episodes and I am yeah. humanoid next, next. and god Damn it, Zach, stop simping for the love of God, please. I have been dead, Troob, and for the love of God, if the next time Angela is on screen, if, Aunt, if Zach is still in love with her, I am going to be very sad. Thank you all for watching, and may the power protect you.